And I believe this win stabilized me as like the best 2K player. I've been in the finals of the 2K league, been in the finals of the Olympics, back to back finals in my team. I finally get a win. So y'all just might as well add me to y'all Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Get up, cocksuck, because it's all over. The third seed in Jazz Gaming at Point Guard from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's splashy! Uh-huh. Should have came in right there, I ain't gonna lie. Fellas, 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 yes sir, you know who it is, the 250k champ, yes sir, finally got my win that, you know, that stabilizes me, so for everybody, I'm gonna explain it real quick, when y'all hear me saying that I'm the best 2k player, just like in the intro, just like in this, I'm not talking about best my team player, I'm not talking about best pro and player, I'm talking about best all around 2k superstar, I'm a quick magic god, I'm a my team god, I'm a pro am god. I'm a park god. I'm a rec god. I'm a my GM god. And I'm a 2K league god. Like, you feel me? Like, all of those in one. Like, nobody, you can't name another player who plays as many game modes as I do in his top two, three, four, five in every single one. Like, some people are top. Like, am I saying I'm the best nigga in two, the best person in 2K league? Of course not. But am I one of the best? Yeah. Am I saying I'm the best my team player? Of course not, even though I am. I'm the best 2K league player and my team player, but because <clears throat> I never say somebody better than me. But I'm saying that I'm top in there and top in another game. I'm just versatile. I'm the best. I'm the most versatile 2K player that the 2K community has ever seen. But honestly, this video just gonna be just touching basis on everything. I mean, like when I mean touching basis on everything, it's like we just gonna get straight into it. You feel me? Like, um, I won. Most people want to know how I prepped. I ain't really, like, compared to last year. Last year, I had, like, seven pages of notes for Ty Debo. I probably spent a month locking in. When I say locking in, I was playing every single day, 12-plus hours a day, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that, just for us to get into 250, and we wasn't even playing on the same patches. We, we were playing for the qualifiers. Last year on qualifiers, we played on patch eight. In 250, we played on patch one. So you do all that grinding for a month and a half and you feel me? They changed the game just like this year. I don't know if y'all could notice because I don't believe y'all could see shot feedback, but we lab, me and Swaggy did all this lab and where mashing was allowed. You couldn't mash on current gen in the finals because the layup timing was broken and you couldn't turn it off. That's why you saw so many missed layups. I had to take out Wilt. I had to take out Shaq. I basically wasted two slots and had to play an outside center, which wasn't even my my game plan, which is why game two you saw was pretty boxed. Him, he had a lineup designed for mashing. He couldn't mash. Why? Because our layup timing was bro so that's the one con to lab and like you lab and then you turn back around and you just something doesn't work in the finals so you have to have three different so basically game two you seeing me and him playing we winging it basically how like if you had to do some type of presentation in class we was winging it we was literally winging it but prepping for him honestly uh I don't really prep for that many people because uh, it's only like three different play styles on this game when you like a top player. Like, they're either a dribbler, and when I say dribbler, that means they look to 300, whoever their guard is. Like, they're not looking to rim run, they're not looking to do anything, they're looking to spam backwards escapes, quick stop you from all angles. Boom, there's 300s. There's mashers. My mashers, I mean people who repeatedly go to the paint and beat your head in. And then there are good defensive players that can also put points on the board. Now, Swaggy falls in the category of the one I just said. So does Ty Debo and a few more. Like, they're good defensive players that can put points on the board. So when you lab for players of that that caliber you your game plan is to not let them outscore you do not let them feed off half court possessions now if they get a fast break off a good stop cool you can get that back because you're supposed to be the better offensive player but you don't want to let them get riled up off defense because one stop can turn into five stops you want to score 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 get stopped once or twice score 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 if they get in if they get more than two stops consecutively you call a timeout 
out as you saw me doing yesterday. Like you are, you don't allow them to feed off defensive energy. It's like the same thing as offensively. Like you don't let me get on the break. If you were to ask anybody what's the most important thing when playing me to not let me do, you don't let me get on the break because it uh, in the third quarter of game two, I believe it was forty to thirty two. Turned into 40 to 40 a minute later. Let me get on the break. Let me get into my groove. So my main thing when prepping for Swaggy was just like, I know coming into the game, like, I can't let him feed off defense. He's a, he's an amazing defender. For most of y'all who don't know him, y'all should check him out. Like, I believe he really don't stream. Twitter is IBH04, but he's in a lot of PL tourneys, a lot of uh, Xbox tourneys. He wins almost all of them. Uh, him and Ty have been going back and forth all year. I've seen him actually beat Ty a few times on uh, the next-gen tourneys. Like, He's just a versatile, uh, generational, like, current current and next when I say generational, he's just a versatile, generational person. So, like, don't think it's fluke that he made it. What happened to Tadiba was obviously unfortunate, but, like, Swaggy still deserves everything that's coming to him. He's a dog. But when playing players of that caliber, the T-Lodens, the 11 Assassins, the Swaggy P. Holmes, like... You don't allow them to annihilate you offensively because then they, those players I just said, when they're up six or eight, they're the most dangerous players because they play methodically. They'll take 18 seconds off the clock to go for a tough mash or they'll shoot a 50-50 when up eight, but never will shoot it when it's a tie game. So like, you gotta be real though. That's the most scary play style. Like those, that, that out of the three play styles that are like known for most comp players, like, that's the you know best play style like to be worried about when playing another one it's the weakest it's it's like weak to everybody else but strength strong to everybody but each other like if you see swaggy and top player you see like 11 and t low and play the game doesn't look how it looks if he was to play me because when playing versus a person of your play style you play better which is why if you see me play versus 300s i'm never really worried because like play verse 300 another thing y'all saw me doing in the tourney a lot of people said it was a lot of off balling going on if you watch my finals matchup i was on balling a lot i on balled more than i off ball because i don't trust my cpu on the screen so that's one of my strengths uh and that's what made one of swaggy's combos also were, were one of his weaknesses we were a wee bit delayed though so like that might have been why but it was like it was pretty predictable where he was gonna go um, I was I was picking right most of the time. I don't think I got scored on in the pick and roll one time outside of a glitch switch. Like it was one end of the third quarter game two. Jalen Rose ends up getting open when Will Chamberlain was supposed to switch and he just dived down for no reason. Other than that, I don't think I gave up a pick and roll three pointer in two games while on ball in 99% of the uh, the series. But uh, let me think. What what else was his weaknesses that I jotted down? Um, he can't go in a score for score run with me, but I don't think anybody on the game can of the names I just named. Besides, like the offensive players such as the Definitives, the Breezies, the Kenny Zeuses, you know, but they can go Gen G E N. Like they can go in a score for score run with me, but like he he can't he can't really go in a score for score run with me. So if I get up early, the game's over because I'm not gonna choke a lead. Like, I'm not going to repeatedly choke leads. Is the game going to let him back in? Yeah, but I'm not going to choke a lead. So, yeah, the mindset I really had was his strengths. I already know his strengths. Strengths, mashing, defense, thriving off extra defense, and it improves his off-ball defense. Like, he gets one stop, now he's lurking you out the corner. He's blitzing you. Has underrated on-ball defense. He switched on a couple times when Cedric had the ball, Cassie had the ball, and made a big play. He actually switched on yesterday and got a charge, put himself into the uh right into the uh field when I was trying to stop and I ran him right over. So strength and also uh offensive rebounding. He's one of the best male rebounders in the game. He does putbacks. It's very hard to box out a putback animation. And that's that weaknesses that he had was more or less just um can't put up a lot of points in a row. Like can't just boom 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 12 points in, in 30 seconds like you don't gotta worry about that doesn't shoot a lot of threes play style wasn't really switched up throughout the series besides his defense improved his offense really didn't change he more tried to win the series off defense um other than that it was just and fast break transition defense wasn't that good i was more missing a lot of shots but his transition defense wasn't really that good that's really that's really it my game plan going in was just play my game but play my game a little bit different on top of the fact stay composed like it was a couple shots that i usually take that i didn't take is because i wasn't feeling that shot at the time 
Like, it's $250,000 on the line. I'm not trying to shoot 720 fades from half court every play. It was a tough shot by Cedric, though, that I ended up dead knocking down in the fourth quarter. That's different. I was feeling that shot. I needed that shot. Rudy Gay hit one from left wing um, in the third quarter to crunch a lead back down. I think so I could go up 43 to 40 or 41 to 38. Like, shots like that, those are in rhythm shots. But just like real life, like, it was some shots I wasn't feeling. Was I nervous? Of course not. I had my whole gang behind me, so like it was no point in me being, you know, nervous in front of them. It's just some shots you just not supposed to take. But this video was just to just, you know, recap everything that happened. I love every single one of y'all. Hopefully we can stay consistent going into the 2K League season, baby. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to me. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, put noties on for everything, Twitch everything. I love every single one of y'all. We out of here. Peace.